Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I, uh, I had a couple fun ideas for today and I was hoping you guys would join me through it. One of them is, um, I've always heard that the 51 Navy Grip is the exact same as a Colt Single Action Army, which they 100% feel the same, but I've never seen anybody actually take the grip off of 51 Navy and put it on a Single Action Army. Well, this is a 51 Navy. It was made in 1863, and this is a single action army made in 1882. So, one I want to test is A, are they exactly the same? And B, how good was Colt's manufacturing abilities for interchangeable parts for 20 years or more? So, we'll give that a shot in a minute. And one other quick thing I just wanted to show you guys a couple new toys that followed me home the other day. Um, one is this. It's another 51 Navy, but it's a cartridge conversion. Um, it's got ivory grips. Uh, this one actually, it's a thrill Colt. Um, it was blown up when I bought it. It's actually been a lot of work to get it where it's at. It's actually, I would say, about 40% Uberti um, mixed in with Colt to get it to to get it to work again. Uh, the cylinder is a Uberti cylinder, and it, it was a lot of work. Another is another 51 Navy, and uh, this one is an 1863 as well. And my my most excited one, it's because I've wanted one of these for a really long time, is first model Dragoon. So uh, yeah, this one was made in 1849, and uh, I'll have videos on all of these pretty soon. Uh, in more detail and uh, you know so let me start taking these apart and so that way you don't have to wait for me to sit here and unscrew everything um, when I get it mostly apart I'll, I'll bring you guys back alright everybody welcome back so as you see I got them apart I have 51 navies up here with its parts and screws and the single action arms down here um, I'll move the single action army stuff out of the way for now. Um, and what we'll do is, is we'll put the brass on the Colt. See how it goes. Now, first off, I want to get this spring off. These Colt springs are crazy powerful, and I'm just not a big fan of them. Um, I put weaker springs on my Colt. As a matter of fact, I do it on almost every gun I own. Um, I haven't had any issues out of it, and it just seems these were just pretty pretty overpowered so what we'll do is, is just to show you here and everything lines up perfectly actually um, and I'll just go light with this this thing has like no torque it's meant for electronics but it's easy for starting screws um, and when you first you know lightly put these in there's a lot of run, and when you're using a full-size screwdriver, it's a pain in the ass. So, I'll just lightly tighten them down. This, just because you can feel. Um, and that that's actually amazing. It lines up really well, which is kind of what I was hoping for, but it's kind of amazing that they copied it exactly, even using probably the same machines to make the parts, being it fits so well. Um, put the spring from the cold on. But, yeah, it actually fits quite well which is kind of interesting uh, a thought is I've seen you know Uberti's and replicas with brass grips on a single action army and you know everybody's like they didn't do that back then wasn't really a thing um, I mean I, I don't, I'm not sure if Colt did it but you know if you were a person that wanted a, a different firearm than everybody else and you kind of like the idea of brass. I mean, this would have been a uh, very easy thing to do, especially if you had a 51 Navy. And the way I've kind of heard it is 51 Navies were a dime a dozen, you know, around the turn of the century. And 
through the 20s, 30s, 40s. And uh, a matter of fact, but there she is, and it fits great. So that that says a lot. That that's kind of amazing that something 20 years later. Uh, well, now we're 100% sure that yes, they are 51 Navy grips, and I've just never seen anybody ever demonstrate it. So, you know, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. Um, like I said, if you would like, subscribe, and I'll have some videos coming out on this little guy, this 51 Navy that was converted. Um, I believe it was probably converted in the early 1870s. Um, looks like it was done by Colt because it does have the, the markings um, from the factory, which have actually gone over the patent. Uh, if you look at the, it says Colt's patent on the frame, and you can barely, you can't really see it in the camera, but it's right there, over stamped. And the serial number makes it seem that way too, because it doesn't, it, it's converted. And this one, it's actually in really good shape. Um, had a lot of rust on it when I first got it. But, and another thing that I do to my guns that I don't see very often with people is I take the nipples out. Because, A, like this one, I'm still fighting to get the nipples out of this one. When you spend a long time fighting to get these nipples out, I keep my guns clean and I do shoot all my guns. I put them in and when I'm done shooting and cleaning them, I, I take them out and clean them. Um, and I leave them out. I leave them in a bag with a little bit of lube in there. And I use it as a, I put them in when I get to the range. But if you would, subscribe, like, like I said before. And I'll get a video on this thing pretty soon. So, all right, everybody. Thank you and bye.